Hello and welcome back to the next segment in sample size calculation for R. Here we'll be covering uh, what I call the yellow test. They're essentially non-parametric versions of the tests we've already seen in some of those green slides. So non-parametric tests, just as a reminder, it's for non-normally distributed data. So we can't use uh, those parametric tests for that kind of data. Now in R, unfortunately, there aren't really any good packages that I found useful. So I'm using, suggesting the parametric plus 15% approach. Um, I'll provide in at the end of the, the last segment, I'll have references, though there's an article based, that this is based on. Uh, so essentially what we'll do is we'll run um, the parametric test and then add a fudge factor. So we'll be looking at the one mean Wilcoxon, the man Whitney, and the paired Wilcoxon. So these are non-parametric analogs of the, the one sample t-test, the two sample t-test, and the paired t-test. So effect size calculations will be uh, like we've seen before. Let's take a look at some examples. Again, reminding ourselves that for t-test, these are the effect size because we're going to just essentially give guesses for these first ones here. For the first one we're asking, question we're asking is the average number of children in Grand Forks is different than one. So the null is that there's only one child, that's that set value. Um, our alternative is there's uh, greater than one. So we're actually going to say, since we said different, we're going to say Greater. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to guess a medium effect and select one tailed. For the man Whitney, so two different groups, two sample means. The average number of snacks we're wondering per day is the difference between young and old person, our two groups. So the null is there is no, is there zero difference, and the alternative is there's um, not zero difference. We're going to guess a small effect size here and two side because we just asked if it was different. Finally, for the paired Wilcoxon, so these are samples of paired tests. For the pairs here, we're talking about twins. So we saw before we were looking at the uh, some of our examples for the paired t-test. We're looking at uh, the same subject before and after something. This one, they're actually different subjects, but they're related because they're they're related to each other genetically, so they're not independent. So the null is that there's a 0% methylation difference and the alternative there's something else. So we're gonna guess a large effect size and here, even though that, even though this, um, we're, at, we're not asking about size here, we're saying zero or not, we're gonna select one tail greater because it doesn't make any sense to say negative you can't get below, like negative 0% doesn't really make sense. So we'll still select one tailed here. Okay, let's take a look. Look at the results here for the one means Wilcoxon. So we're just going to use power T test here. Effect size, one sample again. again. Then we get this out for our, our parametric sample size, but then we need to get a correction of non-parametric. So we're going to round up and multiply by 1.15, which is going to give us a total sample size of 30. So 30 is greater than 26 because the non-parametric are less powerful. So that, uh, that's why. For the man Whitney, again, the power T pest, but inside, instead we're doing two sample and it gives us 198 times 0.15 rounding up is 228. Paired Wilcoxon, this should become familiar by now. Same thing, power T test, but now it's type paired. Get an N of 11, round up times 1.15, gets us a total number of pairs now is 13. So we need 13 pairs of twins, so 26 total individuals. Each twin will have another twin to go with it. Okay, here are some practiced problems for the non paired group t test. Take some time here to uh, work these out on your own. So you can pause this and then um, figure these out before continuing on to the answers.
Okay, let's dig into these answers uh, for number one here. We have this raw data. And so we can calculate a effect size using the means of this minus R. Uh, this is a, a um, one sample test. So this is our set value. So the, the mean number of pets is 1.3 minus one divided by standard deviation, which gives us an effect size of 0.224. Put that in, it's one tail because we're asking about greater, so we'll add greater. And that's, uh, this is the parametric version. We add 1.15 for non-parametric to give us a total of 143. For two, we're giving, once again, we're giving raw data. And we can see that this is going to be that uh, two sample version. So we can calculate our means. We get need a pooled standard deviation. We can get that from the raw data here. Give us effect size of 0.856. It's one tail because we're saying higher. And plug those information in to get 17.59 for parametric. Non-parametric is 20. Now let's take a look at three. So three is, again, very similar to what we saw for the paired. And so we'll do paired. Looks like we have difference value, so we can get mean difference and then standard deviation of that difference to get our effect size of 1.38. It's a two-tailed test because we're asking about difference, um, which gives us parametrically 6.29. We'll, uh, for mon parametric, we need seven pairs. Next, we have the Kruskal-Wallis test which is the non-parametric analog to ANOVA. And again, in R, there really isn't a good way of doing this. <clears throat> so we're gonna get, again do the parametric test plus 15%, like we did for the t-tests. So the actual R code is going to be, again, the ANOVA test, so nothing new here. Number of groups, effect size, students, level, and power. So, for example, we might ask, is there a difference in draft rank across three different months? So, our K, number of groups, is three. We're going to guess a medium effect size here. And then for F tests, again, rem remind yourselves that a medium effect is 0.25. And there's no tails. Uh, again, if we do need to get effect size ourselves, we have to get the sums of squares um, to get partially other square, and then we can uh, plug that in to get our effect size F. Let's take a look at this in actual R. So we pulled up our test. This gives us a number of 52. And since we need to correct for it, this is the parametric. We need the non-parametric. We take 52 times uh, 1.15, and then we're gonna round up that answer of 60.2 to 61 samples. And this is again, remember, uh, same as ANOVA, this is per group, so 61 samples per group. Since we have three groups times three, that's gonna be, I think, 183 total. There we go. Okay, that will move on now to uh, practice. Take some time to try these yourself before continuing. Okay, here for one, we're given this information on these three different groups, faculty, staff, and hourly. We'll need to run something like ANOVA and R to get our sums of squares of treatment in total. We get here to get a partial eta, which we plug back into this equation to get an F or an effect size of 0.667. And three groups, effect size, so forth, times 1.15, round up 10 samples per group, so 30 samples total. Second one, all we're given is that there's 25 different groups. So I'm going to guess a small effect size, 0.1, plug these in, 
gives us this times 1.15 will round up so 105 samples per group which comes out to I believe it's 2625 total so that would be a lot of uh, samples with that, that concludes our yellow tests, which were non-parametric ways of doing the parametric ones. So not too much harder, just uh, essentially running the test and adding correction factor. In the next segment, we'll be covering what I'm calling the red tests, which are using uh, different functions with diff from different R packages, and they're uh, more complicated tests. All right, I will see you then.